I'm going to read just a couple of stories about, uh, about his life. I'm going to uh, maybe four or five of them, just random ones. And this is uh, in the new John, uh, John G. Lake sermons. Of course, they were, you know, the new ones were like 1920, so <laughs> they're kind of old now. But you need to get these books. You need to familiarize yourself with his ministry. Here, here he is. He goes, my personal experience. He goes, I knelt under a tree. I was about 16 years old, uh, and I repented and met the Lord. He's telling a story. Here you go. I don't know if I can hold it here. He says, and I was saved at age 16. I knew Jesus as Savior. And my friends told me, John, you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. Then I think uh, maybe four or five years later, now I'm age 20, and I begin to study the subject of sanctification and begin to press into God with dedication. My friend said, John, you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. And a beautiful anointing of the Spirit was upon my life in these days. And then the ministry of healing began to be opened to me. And I, be, and I ministered for the next 10 years in the power of God with healing. Hundreds and hundreds of people were being healed in my ministry during that next 10 years by the power of God. I could, I could feel the conscious flow of the Holy Spirit flowing in my heart and even through my hands. At the end of that 10 years, I was not satisfied. I think I became the hungriest man for God that ever lived. There was such a hunger in my soul that as I left my offices in Chicago, he was one of the wealthiest men in America, by the way, in the, about 19, it's about 1906 when he's writing, when he's telling the story. He's making $50,000 a year in 1906. And, uh, he's not one of the, uh, you know, the big families, you know, what, like, you know, the Rockefeller families, but as an individual salary, he's one of the, uh, the highest paid men in America at that time. And uh, tremendous success. I mean, $50,000 a year in 1906, that, that's more than it is now. Okay. He goes, I, I was the hungriest man for God that ever lived. I walked out of my offices in Chicago, walked down the street. I had people stop and look at me. They would wonder as they saw the yearning of my soul. I was crying out for God. I must have more than I had experienced up to now. My friends would say, Mr. Lake, you have a beautiful anointing. You already are baptized in the Spirit. Look at the power that's in your ministry. Yes, it was nice as, th- as far as things went. I love that. Yes, it was nice as far as things go. But it was not answering the cry of my heart. I was growing up into a larger understanding of God and what God wanted and my own heart's need of God. I love this. My soul demanded a greater entrance into the presence of God and to the power of God. Then, one day, an old man strolled into my offices in Chicago. He sat down. In the next half hour, that old man revealed more of the knowledge of God to my heart than I'd ever known before. When he left, I said, God bless that old gray head. <laughs> and that's what it says. And that man knows more of God than any man I've ever met. By the grace of God, if that's what the baptism of the Spirit with tongues does, I'm going to get it. Oh, the wonder of God that I saw in that man's life. I went in out, and again, he's been now many years now, moving and healing, etc. I went into fasting and prayer and waiting on God for, uh, for the next nine months with a new intensity. And one day, the glory of God and a new manifestation, a new incoming of God came to my life. When the phenomenon had passed away, the glory of it still rested on my heart. I found out that after this new incoming of God came, my life began to manifest in a varied range of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He began to move in power in a new dimension. I spoke in tongues by the power of God. God flowed through me with a new force. Healings were of a more powerful order. Oh, God was manifesting himself a new revelation of God. Then a new dimension began after that. My nature became so sensitized to the Holy Spirit when I I could lay my hands on near anybody and I could tell them what organ in their body was diseased and even to what extent. I tested it because he's a very scientific man as well as a very astute businessman. He goes, I went into the hospitals. I got the physicians who couldn't diagnose a case. I touched them. I would speak it. I would speak the organ and the disease and the extent and the location and the condition, and it would end up being true. And then the people many times would be healed. He says, I want to talk to you. After I've received uh, uh, the gift of tongues, I like this. I want to talk to you with the utmost frankness and say to you, tongues was the very making of my ministry. I want to read that again. I want to say right with the utmost frankness and say to you. Now, this is, remember, 1910, 1912, when it was, when if you spoke in tongues for real, uh, you were tarred and feathered and humiliated before the city. The speaking in tongues was a really 
uh, uh, unacceptable cultish thing to do. The Pentecostal movement was just being born and it was written off by all the mainline. Uh, even the famous preachers around the world were totally against it. I mean, some are today, but nothing like then. And he's, he's going out and he says, I want to speak with the utmost frankness. It was the making of my ministry. He says, it was that particular communication with God that God reveals to my soul truths that, uh, uh, that, uh, that I use in my ministry day by day. By the time of, by the time of, by that time of communication with me, it was mostly in the night. Many a time I would climb out of bed as I spoke in tongues, take a pencil and pad, jot down beautiful things. And that's how he moved in the realm of power as well. Then he goes on, skip a page or two. He says, then in 1908, I left Chicago and went to South Africa. One night, God came over me in such power, oh, I love this, that streams of liquid glory and power flowed consciously off my hands. It was like streams of electricity. I could point my finger at a person in a meeting, and the stream of God would strike him. One time, a man interrupted a meeting. A meeting I pointed my finger at him. I said, sit down. He fell as if, as if struck by the power of God. He lay for three straight hours. When he became normal, he said, what was that? Something struck me. It was like I was shot straight through. In this one particular meeting, I was, I was, uh, we were ministering till two o'clock in the morning. There were 65 sick people who were all up at the front and they was laying hands. Streams of God were flowing through my hands so powerful. The people would fall as though hit by lightning. I was troubled because of the violence of which they fell. I began to hold my hand a foot away from their head and they would still fall and be healed, almost every one of them, supernatural healings. He he had over 100,000 healings that were documented in his five, he only was in Africa five years, South Africa, 100,000 documented uh, notable miracles, 100,000. Then he went to Spokane, Washington and had another 100,000 the next five years with under the scrutiny of scientists, doctors, critics, all kinds of uh, uh, resistors and uh, tremendous healings. He says, Beloved, that was only the outward manifestation. That's what the people saw when they looked at me. But something was happening in my heart that made my soul on fire for Jesus Christ. Oh, there was a tenderness. There was a supernatural tenderness of God that was so wonderful, my heart reached out. It wept over people in sin. During that period, I could walk down the the aisle. And when they came within 10 feet of me, when I would look at them, they would fall uh, on their face, even one on top of the other. One preacher who was living in sin looked at me and stood. I looked back at him. The power of God hit him. He was saved, filled with the Spirit, and stirred for the nations all that night. In, 18, in the first 18 months in Johannesburg, I planted 100 churches. And of those 100 churches in 18 months, how many of you know that's the power of God? Most of the people that were saved or healed or baptized in the Holy Spirit were, were uh, touched under my own ministry in the tabernacle, and then they went out and filled up all these other churches. I continued in the ministry of healing till I saw hundreds of thousands healed. At that time, I said, there must be more. I said, God, I want to know more. There was a deeper cry in my spirit for a greater consciousness of God. I had a yearning for Christ and his life and his love. I will never forget when I moved to Spokane, Washington. In the first six months I was there, it seemed as though God satisfied the cry of my heart and my spirit. My mind and spirit were so under the glory of God... I was able to speak of God with such a power that I'd never, ever known before. God touched a new depth in my spirit and renewed, re, uh, revealed new possibilities and new realms of power. Beloved, I say to you, now he's talking to the sermon, to the people he's giving the sermon. This is a transcribed sermon. Pray through. Pray through for your church, for your work. Oh, God will come. He will come in power. Do not give up. Press in. Pray through. He will come with waves of love and sweetness and power. And he will satisfy you. Oh, I would abandon my soul to God. I would abandon my soul to him. I would, dis- I would discard all the other issues in my life. And I would enter into Christ Jesus in the way that a man would enter into life. On the next couple, skip of pages. He goes, in South Africa, he goes, one night a fever, a, a fever epidemic broke out. It struck the country for a 300-mile radius. It was the uh, bubonic plague. It's a famous... Uh, uh, I mean, it's famous in history. And he was there when it struck uh, South Africa. I found uh, for 300 miles, uh, it struck this fever in one day. I found men dead in their beds besides their wives. Children were lying dead in the bed alongside their siblings. Whole families were stricken and found dead and dying. In one month, one-fourth of the population of South Africa, of that 300-mile radius, died. One-fourth died. 
So we begin to organize an army to dig graves so that uh, uh, we could uh, get the diseased people away. I had a man in my company whom God anointed to pray, as I've never seen anybody with an anointing to pray. For, for days on end, he remained under this thorn tree. And I would press by in the, pass by in the morning. I would hear his voice crying out. I would return in the evening. He was still crying out in prayer. He had such an authority in prayer. Many times I would prepare a meal and bring it to him because they were burying the people and praying for the people. And I would arouse him out of the spirit of prayer and say, you have to have time to eat. And I would ask, brother, how's it going? Are you getting through? He said, not yet, brother, but I'm going to. And then uh, some days passed and he said, Mr. Lake, I feel that if I had just a little help in intercession uh, in my faith, if you would join me, I think we could break through to God today. As we prayed, the spirit of God overwhelmed both of us with such authority I've never known anything like it, kneeling under that tree. And, it seemed, and, and I began to gradually move away uh, from the uh, tree. Uh, it's 50 or 100 uh, uh, feet away. He's moving in a vision. He's, he's in prayer, but he sees himself in a vision state drifting back. My eyes opened. I witnessed such a scene as I never, ever thought possible. I saw multitudes of demons like a flock of sheep openly. The Spirit had come upon me, upon me and these demons began to rush ahead of me. I cursed them. They were like an army of demons driven back to the place they came the next morning when we all woke up after that night of prayer. The epidemic fever in the whole region was gone. God had destroyed Satan through the authority of prayer. Just so one or two more. Uh, I mean, th- these things are just full of it, you know, these full of stories like this. You just can read them over and I've been reading them for years. I love them. I just, I just, I love them. Because I look at that and I say, I'm going, for, I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way for this thing. I don't care how weak, how broken, how lethargic, how everything. It doesn't matter. There's a holy discontent in our souls for the shallowness we live in, the powerlessness, the barrenness. And, beloved, we have no other option but to acclimate to it and just do a little bit better job than the guy down the road. Or let's go for broke. Let's go for the whole thing. And, of course, that's what we're here for. A lady uh, uh, contacted me by mail, and she had a request for her insane son. She says, as far as I can tell, my son has a demon. And uh, so, uh, let's skip a few paragraphs. He went to her, and he goes, we went and we found the boy, and he had been mad from birth. He had been insane from the day he was born. He was like a wild animal. He would not wear clothing. He would uh, smash himself or anything else that was near him that was given to him. They couldn't even put a dish by him to eat on because he would hurt himself with it. But in the center of an enclosure uh, where there was a stone enclosure hollowed out, they would put him in and slip his food. He ate it like an animal. We tried to catch him. We went in. He was like a a wild lion. He would jump over us. The father said, you'll never catch him. I like this part. I had been somewhat of an athlete in my youth, and I said... (laughs) I told my partner, you get on one side, I'll get on the other. We'll get him. <laughs> There's always thing. He puts little cute things in like that. Okay. Now, uh, beloved. Well, actually, he's just giving it as a sermon. It's that lady transcribing that didn't take any of it out. That, that's really what happened here. But behold, uh, all this sounds strange, I know. But I've never forget that afternoon as long as I live. We got a hold of him. And I knew by the lightning flash of faith that touched my soul, he would be delivered when we got our hands laid on him. Presently, we got him on. I got on one side and my friend got on the other. And we laid hands on him and we commanded the devil out within two minutes. The demon left. He was absolutely transformed and was sane for the first time. And he was the rest of his days. In two minutes. A man that had been in the insane asylum his whole life. Instantly, the the, uh, demon came out. I'm going to read one more story from here. You can read them all yourself. I don't expect you to even remember it. Just like, man, that, that... Guy was fiery, those demons and stuff. But I'm just trying to awaken your appetite for John G. Lake. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, he's talking about, uh, he's telling a story in, in a different message now. And so he's, some of a, uh, uh, he's, uh, he's going over some of the same stuff. Uh, he says, eight years had passed after I'd been healing the sick. Miracles were happening. I'd been practicing the ministry of healing. And uh, the Lord had given me great answers to healing. I saw miracles. But every time I saw a miracle, it created a more intense longing for a deeper realm. Every time I touched the power realm, it it gave me a hunger for a deeper realm. Shortly after that, after uh, these eight years of the ministry of healing, uh, I knelt in prayer and I committed myself to God for a new anointing. Waves of glory passed, passed over my being. I was lifted into a new realm of God's presence and power. 
After this, answers to prayer were more frequent. Miracles uh, happened on a greater measure. I felt myself not satisfied, but on the borderline of even yet a new realm to break into. I was unable to get into it, but my nature was not satisfied with what I was even walking in in the new realm. Finally, I began to set aside hours every day. He's still at the insurance company, you know, this very uh, successful insurance man. I would set aside hours every day dedicated to prayer and meditation and fasting and prayer. And months went on. And, and one morning as I knelt, the Spirit of God spoke to me. He said, be patient until autumn and I will release it. I continued pressing into God with meditation and prayer. I was engaged as a manager of an insurance agency uh, company. And uh, uh, I would preach in the evenings, and I was in the habit of joining a circle of friends after the evening services, and we would gather together, a few of us, and determine to pray through for the full power of God. So we would receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I prayed for nine more months uh, 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 after these meetings, because then he'd work in the next morning. I was ready to throw up my hands and quit. I said, Lord, it's just not going to happen to me. I can't seem to get to the new realm. Already great things are happening, but he said, that's not enough. Then uh, one night a, a friend came to me. He says, hey, we're going to go all night tonight praying for the breakthrough of power. I said, I was so hungry. I said, I'll do it. He said, I, he said and that, I went to that meeting, and in the first five minutes, the light of God broke out all around me. I found myself in the center of an arc of white light that was 15, 10 feet in diameter, the whitest light in all the universe. And the voice of God began to speak out. There was no form, but I heard his voice, and he told him some things about his life I'm going to skip. He said, uh, uh, he goes on, he, oh yeah, there, there, there was a, sh- shortly after this experience, the next day or two, they walked into a meeting, there was a lady in a wheelchair who had I- inflammatory uh, rheumatism. She had been in the condition for 10 years. And while my friend was talking to her, he goes, uh, I was praying uh, privately across the room, and I began to cry out to God with a yearning too deep for words. Suddenly, it's like my heart passed under a shower of warm tropical rain. It was not falling on me. It's like it was falling through me. The power of God was over me. The awe of God was settling over him. This was the night, or, uh, the night after he had that arc of light show up over him. The Spirit said, I've heard your prayers. I've seen your tears. You will now be released in power. You'll be baptized in power. The currents of power begin to rush through my being from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. The shock of power increased like voltage. The currents would pass through me. They would come on my head, rush through my body and, and through my feet. The power was so great, my body began to vibrate. At that moment, I looked at my friend and he would motion me, come over and pray for the woman. I arose up to go over to him. And my body was trembling violently. I had difficulty walking. I went there and I laid one finger. At the moment I laid my finger on the woman's head, currents of power passed through my body and I knew what was going to happen. A flash of dynamic power went through her. The woman was healed and his friend laying hands on her, they both, the power of God knocked them both to the floor. My friend got up and said, John, the Lord has baptized you in the Holy Spirit. Then it's a few months later. A few mo- this guy, he, he gets a realm of power. He's, he has about, I think, six or seven major experiences. Every time he has one, a new me- measure, he starts, he goes for a few months and he says, I want more now, Lord. You, you just took it up another notch, notch. Now after this happens, he goes for one more. And I'll be done with this one then. And I'll finish with that. He goes, one morning I came down to breakfast. I found my appetite had disappeared. And the Lord uh, uh, began to tell me he wanted me to fast. And I went on uh, day after day, and that was on the six days of the fa- fast. I was now in the act of washing my hands, and the Holy Spirit said, go pray right now. So I said, uh, how long have you been waiting for authority to cast out demons? I said, Lord, a very long time. He said, from henceforward, you will cast demons out by the power of God. I rose and praised God. The following night, a gentleman uh, came to the meeting, and he pointed to the large sign that said, in my name, you will cast out devils. He said, do you believe that? I said, I surely do, the, the, the very day of that experience. He said, uh, well, he says, two and, he goes, I've been looking for a minister everywhere that actually believes it. He goes, two and a half years ago, my brother was a manager of a large uh, warehouse, and he became violently insane. He was committed to an asylum. He's been there for two and a half years to this day. The physicians have examined him. They declared there's nothing wrong with his body or his brain. But they cannot account for his insanity. They brought him to the meeting. The man came, and an attendant of the, of the institution came with him. I stopped my preaching, and I looked upon him. I got a half a dozen people who moved in faith, and we got around this guy. And I commanded the devil to come out of that man, and the Spirit of God went through my being like a flash of lightning. I knew in my soul the devil was out. 
and I was not surprised in one moment the man raised his head and spoke intelligently. He was discharged from the institution, returned home, and became manager of the, of the warehouse again. And I have seen hundreds of totally insane people delivered and healed by prayer like this. It just goes on and on and on. 